Hey, what's up guys? It's Baines, and today I want to make a video going over the different builds for the party members in Persona 5 Royal. In the past, I've made videos on some of Joker's personas, and while those videos are cool, they're mainly only relevant for people very far into the game or in New Game Plus. Most people just use whatever personas they find and are able to fuse and rely heavily on Joker's teammates. So I thought I'd share a basic skill path for the party members you could use if you're playing the game and aren't 100% sure what skills to keep or use. And I could talk about each character a bit, what they do, and why they're good. I remember when I first played, I had no idea what things like Bufu and Zio were, what Taru Kaja did, etc. So this might be helpful for some people. One thing I should talk about before getting to the characters are two mechanics which can help you get the skills you want on your party members. The first being the Church Confessional and the second being the Jazz Club, which is new in P5R. The Church Confessional is a system that allows you to call one of your teammates and change their learned skills if you want to. It uses up time, but if you need to revert some changes you made, it's available. The Jazz Club is new in Royal and how it works is you can invite teammates on certain days and have them learn entirely new skills or boost their persona stats by some amount. It unlocks after getting a catchy to confident rank 4. I'll put an image on screen that lists off the major Jazz Club skills you want to attain on your party members and what day they become available. So let's start going through the party members. I won't talk about each skill one by one because A, that would take too long, and B, I'll assume you may know what the skills generally do, or can look them up if not. I'll have a basic skill path for each character on screen. These don't have to be followed one by one, but they can be used as a basic guideline. If you see C10 next to a skill, that means it unlocks after reaching confident rank 10, and 3S means it's a skill that only unlocks during the third semester. I should also mention that the footage in this video is from my own save file. Uh, back when Royal released, I had way too much time on my hands, and for some challenge videos, I did some extra playthroughs to max out some party members' stats. Jazz Club stat increases carry over into subsequent New Game Pluses, so don't be worried if your endgame stats are different from mine on screen. And last thing, if seeing party members awaken personas, the ones you get from reaching max confident rank, is considered a spoiler for you, then probably don't watch the rest of this vid. So first with Morgana, he serves as the default healer of the group and what he does better than anyone else is just that, heal. His trait Proud Presence doubles the effectiveness of recovery skills for the whole party. I guess I should mention that traits are basically an extra passive each teammate gets and they unlock at the second palace. Morgana's good as a general healer, he gets the higher level healing skills earlier than other party members and his trait boosts them even more. But personally as the game progresses I tend to use Makoto as the team healer as her stats and damage output are just higher and her default trait is better as well. Once you get Media Rahan, which is the full party heal, Morgana's trait becomes a bit redundant. That being said, you can still use him the entire game and beat it easily of course. The last thing I should note, Salvation, the full party heal and ailment cure, is a good ability but it also costs a lot of SP. Oftentimes only Media Rahan is needed. So you may want to keep both skills and use either one given the situation. On the right I have some possible Jazz Club skills you could teach to Morgana depending on if you want to make him a better support or deal more damage, however you prefer. Next we have Ryuji who's just one of the most solid characters in the game. What he does is straightforward, he hits hard with physical attacks and boosts your team's damage. That's pretty much it. Especially when you get charge, Ryuji's damage output is really good. Ryuji's trait, Raging Temper, has a low chance of increasing any party member's physical attacks by 40%. So instead of him competing with other physical characters like Yusuke for example, he actually synergizes well with them. His third semester skill, Fighting Spirit, is a full party charge making it even more worthwhile to pair him with physical teammates and any type of physical build on Joker. Arms Master, a skill that reduces the HP cost of physical skills by half, is a Jazz Club skill that is definitely worth considering for Ryuji. On, like Ryuji, is fairly straightforward. She is the mage-like, high magic damage dealing character of the group. Her trait Mastery of Magic has a low chance of reducing the SP cost of magic skills for the party. And this can really come in handy early game because of how strapped you are for SP. In addition, she gets the sleep status skills of Dormina and Lullaby, and sleep is definitely the best status in the game because it allows for any follow-up attack to become a technical, which results in more damage and a chance of knockdown. 
Aunt's third semester skill is high energy, a full party concentrate, so she'll definitely work best with other magic damage dealers like Makoto and or Haru. One thing to note is that while Blazing Hell does more damage than Moragidine, it also has a much higher SP cost, 54 versus 22. The increase in damage doesn't justify the increase in cost really, so you're likely better off sticking with Moragidine. After this we have Yusuke who's another physical attacker in your party. What separates him from Ryuji are his higher strength stat, his access to physical moves that do a lot more damage after a baton pass, and a focus on agility overall through his trait and Masuku Kaja. Yusuke got a big buff in Royal by getting access to Charge, a move that allows your next physical attack to do 2.5 times more damage, from the Jazz Club on September 4th in-game. I'd highly recommend getting this skill for him if you can. Because of his earlier access to Charge, his selection of moves and slightly higher stats, Yusuke can actually output more damage than Ryuji for a good portion of the game, but as I said previously because of Ryuji's trait, it's generally best to use both Yusuke and Ryuji in one party if you're going for big physical damage. Following up we have Makoto who's one of the more well-rounded characters in the game. She has very balanced stats and her best weapon also gives up to plus 11 to all of her stats later on, so she ends up at a very high stat count. Makoto gets access to all the major healing spells, albeit at a later level than when Morgana learns them. In exchange for this, Makoto learns Muraku Kaja, which increases the whole party's defense. More defense means less healing needed, so as the game progresses, I generally tend to use Makoto as a team healer. Her trait Gaia Rage increases the chances of burn, freeze, or shock for the party, so she immediately synergizes well with any combination of On, Yusuke, and Ryuji and can hit nuke technicals off those status enemies. A good setup is something like Makoto plus Ryuji plus Yusuke. You can freeze and shock many enemies following up with strong physical attacks or Makoto's nuke skills. One thing to note is that Atomic Flare is very much a scam. It costs 48 SP versus Freydine's 12, but barely does more damage. Besides the unique animation, it's an absolute skip. I had Makoto learn Debilitate from the Jazz Club on December 11th to make her an even better support. Coming after is Haru, who is one of the most unique party members because of the number of skills she gets access to. Haru gets both Psy and Gun skills as well as various support ones, so picking just 8 to keep can be a bit tricky. You can go any way on Haru, a Psy build, a Gun build, a mix, they all work. Personally in Royal I find the Psy focused one to be a bit more effective mainly because of the buffs technicals received in P5R. To clarify, technicals are hits on enemies inflicted with a status ailment. So for example, if an enemy has freeze or shock on them, a physical or nuke attack would result in a technical. By default, technicals do more damage and have a chance of knockdown. In Royal, you can play billiards with your teammates and raise your party's technical damage rank. By rank 4, technicals do greatly increase damage and have a 100% chance of knockdown. Haru's Psy attacks can be used for landing technicals on almost any status enemy. In addition to this, the special ambush ability you get for Kasumi at her confident rank 4 lets you start ambushes with the enemies having Dizzy, Confuse, or Fear on them. This makes it easy for Haru to do a lot of damage and get many knockdowns in a palace run. To sum up, technicals good, Haru can land a lot of technicals, making her good. Her gun skill of one shot kill can come in handy if you need to land a critical hit. The support skills of Makara Karn, Tetra Karn, and Amrita Shower are all good, but they can be replicated by items or salvation, so keeping them or discarding them is up to you. And lastly, Haru's trait reduces ailment susceptibility for your whole party. This isn't too useful for the majority of the game, but it can come in clutch during some of the more challenging boss fights. Okay, next we have the third semester characters, so if you want to avoid spoilers for that section of the game, I'd advise you to stop here. Alright, so first is Akechi Black Mask version. Honestly, Robin Hood Akechi isn't really worth talking about because he leaves your party pretty quickly and when he rejoins his skill set is completely different. Robin Hood Akechi is very good during the palace you get him because he can hit a lot of weaknesses but the moves you choose to keep on him don't affect the Loki form at all. It should be noted though, if you take Robin Hood Akechi to the Jazz Club for stat increases, those will carry over to the Loki form, so something to keep in mind. 
As for Black Mask Akechi, there isn't much to do in the form of customization because he only learns 9 skills total. You just play using the 8 default ones and then you can replace one with Rebellion Blade later on. Usually Attack Master because if Joker is using a persona that has the skill Auto Mataru, Attack Master is redundant. As for Akechi as a party member, he ends up being versatile at the cost of lacking damage output. Uh, he gets the Curse, Almighty, and Gun moves, which are all cool, but they don't do that much damage relative to your other party members due to a lack of boost or amp skills. Leviathan is a strong physical move, but at that point you have a lot of options when it comes to physical attackers such as Ryuji, Yusuke, or Kasumi. But he does have Debilitate, which is very handy for bosses, and his trait Tactical Spirit has a chance to have support skill costs for the whole party. I actually did some testing about this in the past and it procs about 60% of the time, meaning it can allow you to spam the tier 3 skills such as Fighting Spirit or High Energy a little bit more. Overall, he's not the most OP teammate, but he has great voice lines and he's very entertaining to have in your party, so I do use him most of the time he's available. Last but not least, there's Kasumi, who's a great sort of critical hit specialist. She gets both Sword Dance and Vorpal Blade, the highest crit rate physical skills, as well as App Pupil, which doubles the chance of landing a critical hit. Her support skill of Brave Step also increases the critical rate of the entire party. Very conveniently, a ton of the enemies in the third semester palace are weak to Bless, so it makes using her there a no-brainer. As with the Kechi, Kasumi isn't very customizable due to the point in the story when she joins your party, but she works very well in spite of that. And that basically wraps it up for each party member. Again, this is a single player story based game, so there's no need to pick the optimal party members, just use whoever you like. I wouldn't say there's really a quote unquote best party setup for the whole game because each palace has different sets of enemies and what they're weak or resistant to will determine who's most effective there. I will say for the hardest challenge, which is the new game plus boss Lavenza, I'd generally say that Haru, Kasumi, and Makoto are the best all-purpose team in that situation. The reason being, Lavenza uses a lot of different attacks and ailments, so Haru's trait reducing ailment susceptibility and life wall are extremely useful. Haru is also very good for both the technical and the critical phase of the fight. Kasumi makes the critical phase a lot more manageable because of Brave Step and Sword Dance, and Makoto serves as a general healer, making sure everyone stays alive. Ryuji could even be better than Makoto there if you use the healing accessory called the Salvation Crown on him and are able to survive because he can just boost your physical damage by a lot. But that's just one fight, and it's locked to New Game Plus as well. Anyways, hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, leave any likes and comments, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.